Hi, welcome and I hope you're doing well. Here I have the HP laptop. This is brand new right off the box. We just got it from Costco. And uh, I'd like to do a teardown video on this one so that maybe down the road, later on in future, you're watching this. And if you happen to have problem with the computer, like maybe upgrading the RAM or maybe changing out to a larger hard drive, hopefully this video is going to help you and, and give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that. So here, I just kind of take a glimpse at it. This is the keyboard. There's a touch ID here where you can just, uh, instead of typing the passcode, you can just ID yourself using a fingerprint. And this is how it looks like on the top. By the way, this is a touch screen LCD, just so you know. It looks like this. And this is the back of the computer. And let me tell you the model number here just for a second. So right here it says HP Envy. Model 17 CG1045 CL. I believe that is an L. Is it an L or T? Okay, hopefully you can read the fine print, um, but for me, I think that it's an L. Alright, so um, please give me a thumbs up, like the video before I get started. Okay, so um, as you can really see, I mean, the uh, the computer here, there's only two screws on the bottom left here and this one at the bottom right. But I believe that is too little screw to hold a back plate. So I assume there got to be some sort of the uh, hidden screw right underneath the rubber. So this is the rubber pad and this rubber pad here is to stop the laptop from sliding away. And as I was expected, there are hidden screws right underneath the rubber. Okay, so it is just a double sided tape to hold the rubber down, and this is very easy to just peel off the rubber. <gasps> I just broke it, oh my goodness, but that's all right. Again, oh man to tip it back now let's try to find if there's another rubber on the other side I wonder if there's a rubber for the bottom part of it if none we can skip this part we don't have to explore so let's just wait for it until I find out using a different method by removing the two screws here first by the way the two screws at the bottom here is the torque screws they are T5 screws. On the top here, they are running on a Phillips screwdriver. So let's go ahead and crank the machine up. Sorry, I mean, let's, let's unscrew using the electric screwdriver. Alright, so once I have them removed, let's see if I can pop open the back plate. So what I'll do is, I'll stick underneath here. Okay, to me it feels like there got to be one screw right here because it feels quite stiff and I can't remove the back plate. So let's work around on this side of the rubber. There you go, there's another one screw right here. So this is another way to find out if there's any hidden screws at the bottom of the rubber. The answer is yes, at the right on this side of it. Okay, so once you have that screw removed, the entire thing pops right up. So you can see this is our entire computer right here. So right here is your battery. Let's go ahead and remove the battery.
So there are four screws. Once you unscrew that battery, go ahead and lift the battery up and kind of slide it down. Sorry, there are five screws. Four black and one silver. Okay, you can just slide it down to your body. That's how you re remove the battery. If your battery is not holding the charge, and if you feel like your battery has uh, swollen, like by the keyboard, it's gonna pushing away from the keyboard, that means the battery is swollen, like bulging. And at that time, I highly recommend you to replace the, the battery and do not continue charging the, the computer, like sticking the adapter on the computer for 24 seven. You only stick it in when you're using, when, you, when you're done using, please remove that cable to give the battery life a longer life lifespan. Anyway, this is the uh, battery model number, SA04XL, if you want to do a replacement on the battery. I dropped a screw, so let me go find it before I forgot about the screw. Okay, I found the screw. It's the battery screw that I dropped. All right, let's continue with the process. This is the hard drive. So in this computer, it looks like the primary C drive, it runs on the M.2 drive. And once I unscrew it, I slide it to my right. That's how you remove it. For those of you who try to upgrade the uh, the M.2 drive, this is 256 gigabyte, if you can see it. It's right here on the top right. So if you want to upgrade to like one terabyte or 512, um, I have a different video separately. I'll link it in the description below. What it does is, uh, what the video is all about is, I'll show you on how to clone the M.2 over to a larger M.2. And that way you can have the windows, the program, everything stay the same. All right, so this is the uh, original M.2 and this is the data drive, I believe you have a C drive and a D drive for this uh, video. So once you open up the clipper, go ahead and remove the three screws. That screw seems to be quite stubborn. Let me see if I can. Okay, so once I remove that, I can now pop open the, uh, so four screws, I apologize. Now I can open up the secondary drive here. Okay, so this is the one terabyte. You can upgrade it if you want. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, the secondary drive. Okay, now here is your RAM. The RAM is being covered by this little aluminum plate and you can see that the DDR4 RAM is 8 gigs so 8 and 8 16 total you can upgrade to 16 and 16 that would be the 32 gigs of RAM um, yeah so this is an 8 gigs right again if you want to do a motherboard replacement this is what you're gonna look for the serial number here on this one something about J504P and the the model motherboard might be 70861133 okay but anyway um, let me put the RAM back together show you how to upgrade the RAM already so let's move on to the next one so well, what I would like to do is try to remove the motherboard and before I do that um, just so you know, for this one, the LCD screen, I recommend you to uh, change the entire screen, not just the LCD. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to see if we can remove the entire LCD here. So open up the clipper. This is the uh, 30 pin connector. No, this is the 40 pin connector. And once I remove that one screw, I can actually push open the hinge to about 90 degree angle right there and here I'll come around and let me go ahead and open up this plastic here this plastic here is to hold on to the uh, Wi-Fi now this Wi-Fi is two black cables I'm not sure why they they put two black cables it's so hard to identify it so I'll just put a little marker here on the blue dots 
that means that is for the bottom Wi-Fi and let me go ahead and disconnect the Wi-Fi and this is probably the DC jack for this one here the charging port slide it to my left there's no connector that's how you remove the DC jack this little tape is taping onto all the cables move the tape away and go ahead and remove that one screw all right I just removed the screw right now what I'm doing is push the hinge all the way up to about 90 degree angle like this and here you can see that I'm able to slide let me put the ramp back here Okay, let me go ahead and slide this cover down this is your keyboard so what else is connected here let me see what is this okay this is probably the uh, sorry you need to disconnect this uh, this is probably the uh, the sorry the webcam the microphone the webcam for the screen uh, you just have to slide the connector away from the body and that's how you disconnect it so this is the entire LCD screen. Uh, this is how you replace the LCD screen. And again, this video here is not to show you how to replace the digitizer glass and the LCD itself. The way they make it, I think it's all adhesive seal around the screen. My best suggestions to you is when you replace the LCD, if you have a cracked one, please get the entire L uh, the screen just like that, the entire, uh, the entire LCD as a whole like this all right rather than replace just the glass okay so that is that let's put, move that on the side now let's go ahead and disconnect the speaker the speaker is on this one right here so let's go ahead and slide the connector to my left slide it to my left and then lift the speaker up it doesn't seem like the speaker has looks like something is holding on to the speaker so leave it as this try not to break it and this heat sink is, is it's not sitting down I wonder what happened okay so let's go ahead and disconnect all the cables right now so I'm gonna flip open the the, the clipper slide the keyboard out slide the touchpad slide this and slide that this is the uh, cpu fan connector slide it to my right i'm just using my fingernail to do all the work um, looks like the wi-fi cut needs to come out as well the Wi-Fi is being screwed in so go ahead and remove that screw slide the Wi-Fi to your left disconnect that this is actually a bridge over from the data like all your USB over to the motherboard so that's how you remove it um, again to me it feels like the speaker has a wire running underneath across the motherboard that's how it feels like to me we'll find out this is the DC jack, right? We already disconnected earlier. So go ahead and uh, pop open the DC jack. There's no screw whatsoever. Uh, you just got to, you know, there's a clipper right here. Just pry it open. The DC jack would come off. If you have a broken DC jack, that's how you replace it. Okay, I need to go ahead and disconnect the CPU on the left side here. Push the cable to my left. Now, let me quickly go ahead and remove all the screw and show you the motherboard. That's what we are here for. To do a complete tear down at least you get to see you remove all the motherboards and you get to see the keyboard as well which once you see the keyboard i think you're going to be very disappointed on the keyboard why because the keyboard to me it looks like it's not a replaceable keyboard which means you would have to replace the entire um, palm rest the entire cover right here so let me show show that to you just in a minute yeah uh, as I was correct so the speaker you see that the cable is running across the motherboard from the from the bottom 
so if you have a blown speaker if your speaker is giving you the static noise the buzzing noise man you're gonna have a, a big job just to get to this the speaker replacement you would have to remove all of that I think it's a very big job just for the speaker not sure why they make it like that so now what is stuck here what what is being stuck So far it looks good, everything is off the connection. Oh no. They make it very difficult. Anyway, I found it. I found a problem. So you would have to replace oh not sorry, you would have to remove the heat sink. To get to this one screw, this one screw is right there, right somewhere there. It's holding on to the uh, the motherboard. Okay. So anyway, it's a good video. At least you get to see how to remove or replace the heat sink, um, and also clean out your heat sink if you feel like your computer is getting overheated very quickly and you feel like your fan is blowing off the the uh, on a high speed uh, this is how you let me re-bend the heat sink here a little bit just a little bit okay and uh, yeah so if you feel like the thermal paste is all dried up okay if you feel like this is all dried up I thought there was a leakage here but it's not uh, this is the right this is how you remove the uh, heat sink and get the uh, alcohol wipes wipe it down and then squeeze some thermal paste on the uh, the CPU and a graphics card and that's how you uh, uh, cool off the the computer um, at the same time you can dust it off on a heat sink to to clean things out if it's if if your computer is running really hot all right so this is the one last screw that I was talking about is holding the entire motherboard all right so once that one screw is out i can actually remove 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 come on i shouldn't have any more screws on this side of it Okay, that's how you remove the oops one cable right here. My apologies. My apologies. This cable right there. I'm not sure what that is. Might be a power button. But yeah, so I was uh, in a rush to show you how to remove the motherboard. So that's how you do it. And this is the motherboard number here: GPT seven zero LA dash J five zero four P. Version is one point zero. Uh, the model is made in year 2020, August 25th. Alright, so this is few months old. Well, wait, we are almost in August. Now it's June. So this is almost one year old. Um, motherboard. Okay, so this is how it looks like. The motherboard here, just got to be careful with this part. is very flimsy. I uh, do not want to break the motherboard. Okay, so um, speaker again. Like I said, straightforward. It's just like this, how to remove it. All right, so that's how you do it. The keyboard, the keyboard is not replaceable. You see this little punched in. It's actually made by the company that punched down the manufacturer on this part here. So it's very hard to replace the keyboard. My recommendation is when you have a bad keyboard, let's say you spill some stuff on a keyboard, you need to replace it. You would have to get the entire key just like that. Okay. Alright, so this is it. This is the complete teardown. Um, I hope that this video helps. If you have any question, comment below. Um, if you enjoy this video, I really appreciate if you click the like button. And subscribe to the channel. Until next time, please take care.